Our speaker is Arpit Dubey, who is from DBS, and is going to talk about holistic AML compliance with Apache Druid. His role at DBS is the VP of Plat Platform Architects and Data Analytics. And this is sometime in the middle of the night for him, so we super appreciate him uh, spending the time with us today. He leads the architecture and site reliability engineering for the big data and analytics platform with a special focus on building event-driven capabilities across the organization. So with that said, no further ado, Arpit, take it away. Thanks, Rachel, for the introduction. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. So in today's talk, we are going to talk about uh, one of the common use cases in financial service industry and how Druid can help solve those use cases. So although the use cases focus on financial services, but I believe you can easily relate it to use case in your own industry in many ways. Right. So money laundering, if we just go by the definition, is a process of uh, illegal origin of wealth is disguised by criminals to avoid suspicion and wiping of any trails of incriminating evidences. Right? So these funds when disguised as legitimate income could then be used for terrorist financing, organized crimes and investments. So as the diagram shows, it all begins uh, with uh, the dirty money being placed into the financial system and does a series of rounds between various banks and accounts in order to wipe off any trade. Right, so anti-money laundering is nothing but a set of regulations and procedures that financial institutions have to adhere to avoid these activities. Right, and non-compliance not just results in hefty regulatory fines, uh, but more importantly, it results in loss of reputations because nobody likes to be associated with uh, with uh, these type of activities. So AML, while it has been here for a very long time, but I believe two of the biggest challenges that we face today uh, is over a period of time, criminals have become smarter, uh, especially in obfuscating the transaction that made regulations evolve and become more complex, costly, and obviously difficult to comply with. And also with growth and volume of data, it is simply not feasible to use brute force approach, which many financial institutions were doing before, uh, by deploying an army of analysts to go through large volumes of these transactions and then identify if there is any suspicious activities going on and, and then reporting it as well. Right, so in the next slide, I'm really going to talk about the whole process of AML. And also we will look at some of the key challenges which plagues the current AML solutions that many financial institutions have had. So uh, it all begins when the transaction is placed into the banking system, followed by various data preparation and computation around it, like uh, completing the transaction account profile and client profile, things like uh, entity resolution, segmentation, and match against any watch list, politically exposed person list and sanction list uh, is something which data preparation accounts for as well. This is followed by what I would say is heart of an AML system, that is the transaction monitoring and anomaly detection. Uh, so this is where transaction is basically uh, get analyzed and gets flagged as suspicious, uh, and an alert is generated if need be. So this then go through the case management tools and gets assigned to an analyst for further investigation and finally gets supported to the regulator if it is found out to be a actual money laundering case. So as we see in the whole process, the foundation is really data, right? And then it's important to build these solutions uh, powered by big data and analytical tools. So this way compliance not just becomes fast and effective, but it also becomes cost efficient and can scale and adapt with the evolving requirements that we have at the moment. So some of the challenges which we as well as other financial institutions faces, uh, number one is false positive. So there are high number of alerts which were flagged but ultimately found out to be false positive. Right? So though it might look benign, uh, but false positive results in substantial amount of cost uh, towards especially the investigation effort, right? Because you have to deploy an army of analysts to go over those investigations. And that becomes a prominent contributor to the overall annual cost 
required for the annual uh, for running the AML and compliance operations. Uh, second challenge is the false negatives, right? So this is exactly opposite. Basically, are genuine alerts, but were missed somehow and allowed to pass through. So such incidents can not just cause, cause banks a fortune of money in in, in form of settlements, uh, but also uh, as we discussed before, is it brings loss of reputation because of non-adherence to the compliance. So the next two, which is real-time action capabilities and, and OLAP capabilities, deserve a special attention. And I'll cover them in following slide because they are the key reason for us to select Druid as in our data platform. Um, other challenges are lack of unified information systems or 360 degree views as we call it. Uh, at DBS, we had quite a success in achieving this, but uh, I have seen many organizations are struggling, still struggling with that. Among other challenges uh, we have uh, was a legacy systems that didn't scale enough or neither have capacity to support the growing number of concurrent analysts that need to run these operations simultaneously. And also, like we discussed, large volumes and growing volumes of data sets which are required for modern screening operations uh, were increasing the problem many fold as well. The incumbent systems they also lack the analytical capabilities required for, for these type of solutions as well. So now we have looked at the challenges. I would like to move to the next slide where we will talk, of, talk about a few of the important things, which is being event driven and acting in real time. So traditionally, AML compliance has relied on after-the-fact batch processing. So primarily because AML was always considered as an investigative process, right? So being reactive rather than being proactive. So while regulators do not warrant the need of uh, real-time systems, but we decided to go real-time primarily because of two reasons. So one is, uh, is it was in line with our vision to be event-driven in everything that we do. So our vision is really to stop sharing big files between the systems for batch processing. Everything basically has to be an event. Right? So we have a state-of-an-art uh, event streaming platform powered by Kafka and, and, and a bunch of event processing frameworks around it. And it is used for various use cases like tracking and intervening customer journeys using clickstream analytics or sending customer notifications, offering campaigns based on transaction uh, geolocations, and many more. Through uh, its native real-time capabilities and integration with Kafka without writing the code complex programming is one of the key reasons why Druid fits in our ecosystem so well. But another reason of going real time uh, is basically taking a step towards building an integrated system. So as we see that AML not necessarily have to be real time, but if we uh, integrate the system for fraud, which demands real time action. So that's, that's kind of the target we are moving towards as well. So in the diagram, if we see various aspects of AML and how basically being real-time could help, right? So KYC onboarding, simply put, real-time KYC checks provide business values by enabling faster onboarding of uh, any customers, right? So benefiting both the bank as well as their clients. It also reduces the operational cost with automated account opening for digital lifestyle services. Other things like customer review, where basically we have to review customer at an ongoing basis. So facilitate frequent screening for high-risk customers. And also uh, re-screening to keep up with the real-time updates uh, that is happening at the regulator end as well. Other things like forensic investigation also becomes more responsive and the whole process becomes more on-demand and real-time in nature. The sanction and payment, basically, you need to, you have the capability now to uh, fast uh, decisioning and interdiction if possible. And also, you could now support online services and faster payment methods like ACH or within the same day transaction kind of a thing. 
uh, and we discussed like how if we integrate the whole system with other uh, techniques like fraud detection, basically you can just not account for losses, but you actually can do the loss avoidance as well. So another talent that we spoke about and we moved to the next slide for it is basically OLAP mining. So OLAP together with machine learning are important tools in speeding up and streamlining the whole transaction monitoring, anomaly detection, and investigation process. So it could also help in reducing some of the challenges like we discussed about false positive and increasing the true positives. Uh, while majority of these tasks are ultimately performed by machine learning, but Druid plays an important role here in reaching to the final stage as well. So Druid's capability of drilling, pivoting, uh, filtering, slicing, dicing, especially all in real time, is another reason why we chose to go with Druid as well. So in case of AML, again, you could relate it to various use cases in your industry, but different OLAP strategy where Druid could be useful um, could be characterization where you characterize a transaction by discovering general patterns of high-risk customers and transactions. You could do classification associations where you discover transaction activity of customers with similar traits based on uh, their business type, geographical locations, etc. Or learn correlation between alert produced or against a verified suspicious activity. Uh, can do comparisons, uh, predictions, cluster analytics, uh, more importantly, time series analysis, right, where you evaluate some trends or periodic growth patterns. And last but not the least, right, there's uh, revisualization and reporting and ad hoc analysis, right? So we use it for various reports and dashboards which are sent for regulators and are meant for executives. Uh, and also the investigators basically do a lot of ad hoc analysis in order to really determine if a given anomaly is, is a risk or not. So moving to the next slide, like we spoke about the challenges, we spoke about the requirements. A question could be, where do we start, right? Like where do a financial institution start? So first thing I really believe uh, is a need of a complete and single version of data for analysis and reporting. By aggregating, analyzing, and correlating this petabytes and terabytes of internally and externally generated data in a single platform basically can enable us solve some of the toughest problems around money laundering. So the diagram basically shows our version of what is commonly known as data river architecture. So you have a bunch of disparate systems on the left that goes through the event publishing layer, which basically standardizes each events according to the core data model, right? So you could have different transaction systems and each can have a different definition for the transaction event. So we generally have a common global event publisher layer, which basically transform and standardize these transactions uh, as per the common data model that we have. And all these events get published to our delivery layer, which is Kafka. And then you have on top the event processor, which basically does the data preparation thing. Right? So these could be apps which are built on Spark streaming, Kafka streams, or Flink which basically enriches the events and together with uh, the rule-based approach and machine learning uh, flags any suspicious transactions. So these events as we see at the bottom also goes to the historical lake or for historical analysis. So you have a bunch of batch processor and SQL on Hadoop kind of capabilities there. Uh, the suspicious events once generated into Kafka also gets picked up by the case managers. Um, for clarity sake, I haven't shown it in the picture here, but the case manager is where the case gets assigned to an investigator and there is a whole workflow where investigation uh, takes place. Right? So now we need to have, uh, for this investigation and analysis, we do need to have different needs and hence the requirement for different data engines which are shown in serving layer. Right? So event goes to a NoSQL database for faster key value lookups. 
So especially for machine learning algorithms that might need uh, a customer's last six months of transaction history with just a key value kind of a lookup, we do use a lot of NoSQL databases for it. It also gets into a graph engine for link analysis or network analysis, right? So if you have typically in anti-money laundering, you need to find out any cyclic paths, right? Uh, so that's where the graph engine helps us as well. So here Druid plays a very important role by enabling what we already discussed, that is OLAP mining, reporting, and dashboarding along with ad hoc analysis, which is done by the investigators. But it also serves as the low latency backend of our investigation UI, right? So when the case gets assigned to an investigator, it basically leverages this investigation UI in order to, you know, look at that transaction from a 360 degree view. And that's where Druid uh, comes handy as well. So in the next slide, Basically, like what we have discussed about the whole AML process, it's just putting pieces together, which piece of this architecture basically serves which piece of uh, the whole process. Right? So if we really see Kafka is where Kafka and the event publishers are where we collect the data, and the event processor, which is basically our CEP engines, are the one where we in real time do the data preparation and with series of rule based and machine learning kind of model do the transaction monitoring and anomaly detection as well. Right? The serving layer and the system of intelligence together basically help us do not only the transaction monitoring and anomaly detection, but also like we discussed the investigation and finally the reporting as well. Uh, of these anomalies to the regulators as, and to the executives. So this basically completes the whole discussion that we had in the next subsequent slide. I would like to talk about a few other use cases that we are using to it for. Although we are in a very nascent stage at the moment, but these are certain things that we are looking forward to in order to solve some of the problems. So like we discussed, we do have a big data platform which basically serves different business functions across DBS. Uh, and there are thousands of data pipelines, thousands of servers with big data distributed services running on it. So we really want to do AI in operations, right? That is predicting servers and data pipeline failures with time series telemetry data that we collect from various sources. So Druid, uh, really can help us in all the OLAP mining and, and the other type of analysis that we have discussed. The other things are identification of audit uh, for any unusual suspicious activity around our data system. So being a bank, there is a lot of sensitive data that we hold. And it's, it's a whole set of uh, data loss prevention rules that we need to follow as well. So. Again, that is something similar to a fraud and anti-money laundering, but in terms of uh, data access, basically. So that is another use case where we are trying to leave Raj to it as well. And like we discussed, our aim basically is to have one integrated system, which we just not use it for AML, but we also use it for other regulatory and compliance programs as well. Right, so which could be FATCA or customer due diligence, know your customer as well. So these are some of the use cases. Um, with this, I believe now it's time for questions. Thank you so much uh, for this, Arvid. This was uh, fantastic. So we've got a number of questions, and if you do have any questions for Arpit, please please be sure to add them to the Q and A panel. Um, the first one is. Uh, how is your OLAP and machine learning data integrated and structured? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like for machine learning, as I said, like Google there's one engine which we leave that on, but there are other bunch of systems like NoSQL databases and our other in-memory file systems and, and SQL on Hadoop, which does complete the whole picture as well. Right? So, 
and if I talk about the integration piece, we do have our data science workbench. That's where basically we train and test our models. And using the native querying capabilities over the REST API is how we basically access the data that is stored in in Druid. So, do you use uh, Druid to, to generate those training and validation data? Yeah. Yeah, so basically, like Druid is kind of a 360 analytical view that we have. And then, depending on the query patterns and depending on the type of analysis that we are trying to do, we do generate different type of data sources and that basically serves these models as well. And what uh, tools are you using for visualization? So visualization, again, we do have a range of tools, but then if I talk about some from open source community, we, we leverage more on Superset, but uh, with our partnership with Imply going to the next level, we are also looking at Pivot as one of the tool of choice for visualization as well. So are the components in the intelligent layer, intelligence layer polling Druid, or is Druid pushing data to any of these components? Um, so if so, what was the push integration point? So are you using uh, Druid yeah. to f other parts? Yeah, it's more of a pull-based thing. Like Druid ultimately is the serving component, right? So it doesn't push us the data anywhere else. It's basically the system of intelligence to connect to Druid and then um, take the data for analysis purpose. And one of our previous speakers uh, from Athena Health wants to know, what is the synergy between your data that you have in GraphDB and the data on Druid? Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of synergy. Uh, we have to store it separately because of different capabilities that we want to have. Right? So the data that goes into Graph Engine, again, is is about customer, the relationship of customers with each other, and and basically the relationship between the different transactions. And if you really see, the whole data is is basically the event that goes into uh, into Druid as well, right? So, but since Druid is not meant for running those graph algorithms, so that's why we store it separately in a different way. So there is a step in between if we go back to the architecture diagrams where we transform the data and prepare it to be able to ingest it into the graph engine. Right, so it's, uh, there is synergy, but, but basically those are two different views of looking at the uh, same thing differently. So how do you um, ensure the data quality for these streaming events? Mm -hmm. So one thing is basically like whole of our data platform, be it batch or be it real time, it's all metadata driven, right? So first and foremost thing, it's not an afterthought. So data quality and data profiling and all those basically are automated in certain ways. Like we discussed about the global event publishers and in batch also we do have a batch framework. So it's not a human basically which which ingests all this data, right? So human just defines these rules, be it batch or real time, and the machine then according to it basically puts an event into Kafka, right? If it doesn't comply to certain quality rules, then it gets rejected and then gets acted separately by by the analysts uh, or the programmers. So we have a bunch of questions about um, the latency, so what's the end-to-end -end latency of the system? How much data are you processing? Yeah, so at the moment, like, again, uh, we don't use Druid as a serving there for all of our events, but at the moment, we are generating around half a billion events per day, and end-to-end -end latency ranges uh, depending on different use cases, but it remains less than 500 milliseconds end to end. Uh, and so how much data do you have in your cluster? So we are still in terabytes. We are not in petabytes, but it is hundreds of terabytes at the moment. 
Uh, do you have any idea of your uh, number of queries per second and the uh, d input data rate? Yep. So, but these are some numbers I cannot write or share. Actually. No, no, that's fine. That's uh, that's a good answer. Yep. <laughs> uh, how <laughs> long how long have you been using uh, Druid in in production at DBS? Yep. So we have been using Druid. Uh, primarily the open source one for uh, more than a year. And in search of an enterprise partner, we found Employ to be the perfect one. So going forward, we are looking to use Employ distribution of it. It's been more than a year in production. Um, and how many developers do you have building, uh, working on this environment? So we have a, a horizontal big data platform, which basically is a lean team of engineers who basically works on different technologies. And then you have different applications which are hosted on our platforms. So, so difficult to give a number, but, but primarily every application ranges from uh, five to 10 developers per application. You've got a lot of people interested in uh, speeds and feeds in, in this particular case. So I know there's a lot of things that you can't answer there, but um, let's, uh, we'll definitely work on uh, answers to a lot of people's questions here that, that are appropriate for, um, for you guys to be able to answer. But yeah, you've got probably six or seven people <laughs> asking uh, about how much data, the speeds, the queries per second. So that's great. So we'll, we'll put those on the table for now. Um, well, let's see. Uh, do you have any late arriving data or out of order data? Yes, we do have that. And for that, basically, we have a separate reconciliation pipelines running as well. So that's how we basically tackle it. Right, so you have a event, like real time events coming in and then there could be chances of those uh, events arriving late. Uh, we basically run a, a periodic reconciliation against the true source of information where they send all the events together as well. And that's how we basically reconcile against uh, any missed events. And la last two questions before we're out of time is, do you use containerization for running your stack? Uh, at the moment, no, but we run on VM, uh, but we do have uh, OpenShift Kubernetes and Pivotal Kubernetes under our umbrella where we would be looking forward to deploy Druid next. Um, how did you hear about Druid and wh what was it uh, real-time interactive analytics or something else? Yes, so as I said, real-time and uh, ability to act and analyze the data in real time are the two reasons we look forward to do it. Actually, we're using some of the other third party tools for visualization of real time events, uh, but we definitely found Druid to be better in that area as compared to the one we were using. And one of the committers wants to know if you can improve Druid's capabilities for your use cases. Just uh, what would it be? So I think it's too early for us to suggest anything. Um, like though there are some areas, especially around multi-tenancy, that we are looking forward for some of the work from community and from employee because we are the horizontal unit across and serve across different applications in DBS. So those capabilities are a little more important for us to be able to serve to different critical applications without them stepping on each other's door. Well, fantastic. So that is at the bottom of the hour. So we'll let you go back to bed. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, for talking to us in the middle of the night. We super appreciate it. It's a great story and Thanks we can't wait more about it. Yep. Thank you very much. Awesome.